Hello and welcome to this tutorial on nitrogen based functional groups. We're just going to have a quick look through all the amine based groups, starting with amides. So, amides are um, denoted by this carbonyl connected to uh, NH2. However, it doesn't have to be an NH2, that um, hydrogens can be replaced with any group. You're looking for that functionality of the nitrogen, carbon, double bond oxygen. So this is a, a classic example of the functional group here. And if we extend it to look at peptides and amino acids, you can see where the amide functionality is, is present throughout nature in a lot of naturally occurring compounds. Okay, so moving on now to the amines. Uh, the amines on the next um, level here. So the amines are denoted by nitrogen. S simply that, just a nitrogen is either connected to hydrogen or it can be an alkyl group, even an aromatic group, something like that. So it's some hydrocarbon it's connected to. Um, so primary amines have just got one alkyl group connected to them. Secondary amines, they have two alkyl groups connected to them, leaving one hydrogen there. And there's two uh, alkyl groups. And the example given here, which is taken from Wikipedia, is simply dimethylamine. And just to re-emphasize where the primary, secondary and tertiary names come from, the primary comes from having one alkyl group, secondary two alkyl groups. Brings us on to the tertiary amines, and the tertiary amines have three alkyl groups connected to them, as shown here. And an example of that would be uh, a trimethylamine or, or triethylamine or something like that. Okay, so the last one in the series for the amines is the quaternary ammonium ions, uh, or ammonium salts. And so these are denoted by having four alkyl groups connected to nitrogen. That means nitrogen is donated some of its electrons into another alkyl group, another carbon, and that makes the nitrogen there positively charged. So you'll always find these associated with some counter ion, some, some anion, if you will, so like ammonium chloride. Uh, with the simplest example, and we've got choline here, so choline chloride or something like that. Now the last group in the series here um, shouldn't turn up too much at air level uh, standard, but it certainly will turn up a lot in reaction mechanisms. They're the, the imines and the imids at the bottom. So looking at the imines, they've, they've uh, four different types of uh, imine based on whether the hydrogen is connected to nitrogen or whether the the carbon's actually got two alkyl groups or just one alkyl group associated with it. Okay, so let's have a look at the imines in a little bit more detail. If we have a look at the um, carbon of the carbon double bond to the nitrogen, you'll see that in the ketamines we've got uh, two R groups, and that's crucial. So that's what defines a ketamine. Now, the primary and secondary are differentiated by either the nitrogen having a hydrogen or it having a uh, an alkyl group. So primary has a hydrogen, secondary has a, an alkyl group. Looking on uh, to the next series, looking at the aldimines. Now aldimines have a hydrogen uh, connected to um, the carbon there. And the difference between the primary and secondary again is just whether that nitrogen has got a hydrogen or it's got an alkyl group stuck on it. But the aldimines will always have a hydrogen stuck to the carbon. And just to re-emphasize here, we've got the um, primary and secondary aldamines denoted by either a hydrogen there for primary or a, an alkyl group there for the secondary. And that is the only difference between the two. That brings us on to the last one in the series. And last one's uh, the, the imids, but they're called imids, but you actually pronounce the compounds imide. So in this particular example, we've got succinamide. And these uh, imids are actually quite straightforward and easy to pick up. They've got a carbonyl group connected to a nitrogen which is connected to another carbonyl group. Very similar to the carboxylates that we saw uh, in the oxygen functional groups. So that's it for the uh, nitrogen based functional groups. Uh, you'll see these coming up all the time, especially when you're doing, looking at infrared spectroscopy and things like that. So we name functional groups basically so we can talk about them and describe them in reaction mechanisms. So I hope this has helped. Bye for now.